The liberal media website, uh, Media Matters, has declared a war on Fox News, and now more and more people are calling for the organization to lose its tax-exempt status. Syndicated columnist, and I believe it's now seven-time best-selling author, Ann Coulter, joins us now to weigh in. Their latest book is Demonic. Good morning to you, Ann. Morning, Ann. Good morning. It's eight times. Eight oh, times. So I knew sorry. she'd correct me if I had that wrong. <laughs> All right. Um, look, maybe Media Matters intended to be an educational institution as they applied four years ago. They are clearly not that today. Where do you direct the, the frustration, the outrage now? Is it towards the IRS? Um, I think it's a good question. Um, a serious point that they uh, don't qualify for 501c3 status, though I'm sort of torn because um, at least when they report on me, and I think most people, you know, there'll be some inflammatory, outrageous headline, Ann Coulter, American Nazi. But then they actually quote me accurately, which is unlike, say, Howard Kurtz at the Washington Post. And I always think, oh, that's a good point. It's fantastic publicity. And I suppose, um, <laughs> you know, I'd like to see a chart of how many millions George Soros has spent on media matters trying to get Fox off the air um, with, you know, next to a chart of Fox's ratings over the past however many years it's been, five, ten years. Um, but on the other hand, I don't think they do qualify uh, for, for an educational right. purpose. There are four, four Four factors the IRS lists in its code to have the educational purpose withdrawn, the 501c3 status, which allows people to donate to Media Matters and get a tax exemption. Um, and I, I think you only have to have one of them to have your tax exemption withdrawn. I think Media Matters hits all four. One of them is using inflammatory or emotional language. One is pressing viewpoints not substantiated by the facts. And as I indicate, the headlines never are substantiated. I mean, it's right there. You could just read it um, and or or using distorted facts and and beyond the actual IRS code it's just kind of a peculiar institution I mean there are educational institutions that will criticize things that are said on air political fact or news busters but they give actual facts um, right. they aren't it's it's a strange thing to have an allegedly educational organization and their job is to get somebody fired right and I think when we think about <laughs> I mean, these, you don't uh, have stop fought yeah well I think when we think Sorry, about these ahead. organizations that we uh, typically associate with the 503 C we you know Boy Scouts or, Red or the Cross, Red Cross Salvation or other charitable Army. organizations that actually uh, are doing good work and quality work and I think we even have some numbers we showed earlier this morning about the number of stories that they focused on with Fox News on their website 12,000 different stories that they focused on and I think it had like 53 that they covered from other news organizations. It seems like it's a double standard. Right, and that's, and that's you, when a conservative goes on another network. I mean, their objective is to, ha to have less free speech. Um, PolitiFact Newsbusters is to have more free speech. It's um, to the extent that Newsbusters is criticizing liberal bias in the media. You know, they want. They want MSNBC to have more conservatives on, whereas Media Matters, I mean, they have, they're constantly denouncing networks for having me on, and successfully with NBC, I might add. Um, that's, they want less free speech. It's just a very weird aspect, just facially, beyond the, the letter of the law. Um, you know, fire Bob, get rid of Bob. This is our organization. Um, we're going to direct all of our attention to destroying someone else as opposed to getting the facts right or correcting misstatements made on air. Like I say, compared to Newsbusters or PolitiFact. I don't even know if PolitiFact. Yeah. I assume Newsbuster. I assume they're both 501 Well, CDs. maybe this is in the hands of the viewers now. They can go to foxnation.com. There's a link to the IRS website, and they can start to make some noise. Maybe then the IRS changes that tax code. We want to switch now to Michelle Bachman. She was in Iowa yesterday. Her boss, Wait, can I just say one more thing about Media Matters? Go ahead. Um, anyone who's injured can, can has standing to bring a lawsuit. And Fox News, I think it would not be hard to find sponsors who have withdrawn um, because of hysteria area ginned up by Media Matters. They certainly have standing. I, I have standing. Glenn Beck has standing. There are people who are, hmm. when their entire organization is dedicated to keeping certain conservative voices off air, um, you do have injury and you do have people who could, who could who challenge could Media Matters. You yeah, can sue? Who have standing to challenge Media Matters' tax-exempt status. Interesting.
Well, we'll it's not going to be happens. just letters, just emails into the website. The IRS under sure. Obama, my guess is, is not going to leap up on this. But a real lawsuit could yeah. be brought. Well, we had a guest on earlier that said the state's attorney general could actually do something in this case, too. I'm not sure which state would be responsible there. But real quickly, on Michelle Bachman, doing very well in the polls, probably the one surging the most. And it looks like, if you look at this Fox News poll, there's kind of the Mitt Romney vote, and maybe there's the anti-Mitt Romney vote. If that's how it breaks, down. Is she the one most likely to hold that title? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, we'll see when people vote what happens. I th as I've said before, I think she's magnificent. I don't think you can run from the House. Unfortunately, we have a lot of fantastic House members, but I would encourage all of them, um, you know, Michelle Bachman, uh, Thad McCotter, uh, they should go back to their home states and run for governor or at least senator. Mm. Um, but I agree with your analysis that it tends to be at least until um, our true hero leaps in. Chris Christie. Chris Christie. <laughs> it is a Romney or anyone, let's see if there's somebody else we like more than Romney. I suspect that, I mean, historically since 1880, it's been a governor or a senator. <laughs> yeah, which is really surprising, I think, and that makes that's, that's an excellent point. Michelle Bachman, though, are you surprised, and I say this with a, with a half of a smile as I uh, can anticipate your response, are you surprised at all about the left's attacks on her and going after her now? Is she the new Sarah Palin that they're trying to vilify? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Liberals hate conservative women. They hate them with a hot, hot hate of a thousand sons. I think they see women, I mean, as I write in my book, Demonic, that the peculiar obsession liberals have with conservative women, I think, comes from, from, well, from their hatred of God and wanting to suppress the morals of the people. And they see mm -hmm. Uh, women, conservative women in particular, they correctly see them as the keepers of religious faith and moral values. And it is true that um, Republican women politicians will tend to stress things like the social issues, abortion, gay sure. marriage, that sort of thing, whereas the Republican men tend to be talking about, you know, reducing the capital gains tax right. for the Fed. It is an interesting double standard. All right, well, Demonic is her eighth best-selling book. I missed that earlier, not seventh. Ann Coulter, have a happy Fourth of July weekend. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Ann. You too. Thank you. I think she was just saying that men are boring. That's the kind of stuff we talk about. She might be right.